Hello, welcome back. This is David Williams again. Today's topic is multiplexers. Now, multiplexers are another combinational logic circuit where a combinational logic circuit, once again, is any logic circuit where the output depends only on the input values. And what we see here is a little block diagram of a multiplexer circuit. And multiplexer circuit is really, it's sort of like a switch. Let's go over to my drawing program here and let's draw a picture of, of a block diagram of, of a more complicated multiplexer circuit than what you saw in that previous, in that first slide there. Okay, so here's my block diagram of a multiplexer, and here's, it's a 8 to 1, 8 to 1 mux. And what that means is I am going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 inputs and I'm going to have one output. So I7, I6, I5. Make sure these look like I's. I4, I3, I2, I1, and I0. So I've got eight inputs and I've got one output. And basically, the other thing well, so, so the other thing we have is we've got two, three, in this case, three select bits that I've labeled S2, S1, and S0. And what happens is the value of these select bits is going to determine which one of these input bits gets mapped to the output. So you can sort of think of it like a big switch where this output, you've got the signal coming into the output here, and each one of these signals comes comes into the switch and then we've got this arrow or this this connection I can draw it a little bit longer maybe we've got this connection here that's going to flip between one of these eight inputs and the position of the switch is going to be determined by which one of these or be determined by the value of the S2, S1, S0 signal. So, so for example, uh, e.g., if S2, S1, S0, the, the combination of them is equal to, uh, let's say, 0, 1, 0, then my connection is going to be, look at the value here, S2, S1, S0 is equal to 2, so my connection is going to be to input 2. So all of these other inputs doesn't matter what value they have; they're not going. They're going to be ignored. Only the value of I2 is going to be connected to the output. Or, for example, if S2, S1, S0 is equal to 1, 1, 0, that's the value of 6. So that means my input number 6 is going to be connected to the output. So it doesn't matter what any of the other values are. Only I6 value is going to be connected to the output. And you can see that the number of select bits is going to determine how many different inputs can be chosen from. And so I've got three select bits here. So with three bits, I can have numbers from 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1. So I've got actually eight different values that S2, S1, S0 can be as a, as a group. So I'm going to be able to select from eight different inputs to map to the output. We can have, so we can have different sizes of multiplexers. We could have here's here we've got an eight to one mux. We could also have a four four to one mux, where I've got four inputs one two three four, and in order to in order to be able to select from four different inputs, I'm going to have to have two select bits. So I'm going to have an S one and an S zero, and my one output. So I'll have my I three I two I one I zero. My S one and S zero is going to determine which one of these four inputs gets mapped to my output. So here's a, a 4 to 1 mux. I could have a 2 to 1 mux. I could have a 16 to 1 mux. I mean, in theory, I could have any, any number of inputs mapped to, a, mapped to an output. Now the question is, where are multiplexers used? Well, I'll show you a couple of, of simple examples. Uh, let's clear the screen here. A couple of simple examples. Now, th this is actually sort of an, an analog type of example, but the, the control is still is still going to be digital. Let's say I've got 
person here, let's call this person A0, and another person over here, let's call this person A1. And these two people want to have a communication, communication with each other over some kind of, I don't know, old-fashioned telephone. So these guys are talking over this old-fashioned type of telephone. It doesn't have to be old-fashioned telephone. It can be any type of telephone or any type of communication link. And at the same time, I've got another person here. Let's call this person A1 and another person here. Oops, I get my numbers all confused. I'm going to call the second person on this side B0. This person's A1 and this fourth person is B1. Okay, now these two guys, A1 and B1, they also want to have a communication. They also want to have a little chat. Now the problem is we only have one communication line between, you know, whatever this physical location is and whatever this physical location is. We only have this one communication channel. So what we can do is on this side we can have a multiplexer. Now the multiplexer is going to have the two let's just draw this box here to represent the multiplexer. This will be a two to one mux. We've got two different inputs, this input and this input, and going to this particular output and we're going to have a, a select bit. We can just call that S. And that S is going to determine which of the two inputs it's connected to. Now at the same time, we'll, I'll, I'll have a, another video talking about this particular circuit, which is a demultiplexer where you've got one input going to some number of outputs. Basically works the exact opposite of, of a multiplexer. Another select bit. So as long as these two select bits are in sync with each other and, and going at a fairly rapid rate, we're able to to switch between this, these two, these two guys, at the same time as we switch between these two guys, and and if you're doing this this fast enough, you you know you're going to drop half the information, but but a voice communication doesn't really doesn't actually really need the it, it it can it can handle actually dropping dropping half of that communication. You'll still be able to get the data the data through the 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 communication through. So it, as long as you're going fast enough, it's you're not even going to notice the the switching back and forth. So here we've got a multiplexer switching back and forth between two different inputs, A0 and A1, and a demultiplexer switching back and forth between two outputs, B0 and B1. So there's a, a, one, a simple example of, of where a multiplexer might work. Now we've got probably maybe analog inputs, not necessarily, I guess these could be digital phones, digital inputs here, so switching back and forth between di two different digital inputs. Uh, a slightly more complicated example would be in a, a sensor system. Now let's say we've got this, this sensor system that's controlled by a microcontroller. We've got this microcontroller, a little computer brain here that's gathering some sensor data. And now typically microcontrollers are, are limited to the number of connections they have to the outside world. There's only a certain number of pins that they have. But in this particular system, we want to have several different sensors and each one of these sensors are outputting data in in the form of 8 bits we got this 8 bit 8 bit output from each one of these sensors now let's let's identify what what these sensors are so we've got let's say a temperature sensor and a, a, I don't know pressure sensor and humidity so maybe we got a little weather station here and a little wind speed. So we got for these four these four different temperature sensors. So and in, in each one of these temperature sensors is outputting eight bits of information at a time. So we'd have a total of eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two bits of info. But a microcontroller, I mean some microcontrollers don't even have eight they don't even have thirty-two connections on them. So thirty-two pins don't even have thirty-two pins on them. So how, what what are we gonna do? Well what we could do is we could set up Um, an 8-bit 4-to-1 mux. So what that means is basically we're going to have 8 different 4-to-1 multiplexers. And 
connect the output of each one of the temperature sensors to this this uh, array of four to one multiplexers. And we'll have eight bits connected from the output of the multiplexer to the microcontroller. And then the microcontroller is also going to have the three select signals. Let's tie them together into one bus here. So this is, there's actually three signals going back here to the multiplexer. Uh, from the multiplexer to the microcontroller. Actually, the other way. Microcontroller will output the signal to the multiplexer. And that, now the microcontroller then can cycle through which one of these particular sensors it, it wants to read at any particular time. And instead of having 32 bits needed to be connected from the microcontroller, we only have to connect 11 bits. And so we could just cycle between the values 0, 0, 0, Actually, we don't need three, do we? These are four. These are the four to one mux. We only need two bits there. So we only need ten connections. So we only need to cycle between the values um, zero, zero, zero. So let's say this is input three, two, one, and zero down here. Zero, zero would select wind. Zero, one would select the humidity. One, zero would select the pressure, and one, one would select the temperature. So the microcontroller probably has an output potentially have an algorithm going through going um, through these select bits. Zero, zero, get the reading from the wind. Zero, one, get the reading from the humidity. One, zero, get the reading from the pressure. And one, one, get the reading from the, from the temperature. And just keep cycling through and, and store the data in the, in the appropriate location. Right. Now, one more thing to consider for these multiplexers. We've looked at a couple examples and have a general idea of how they work. Let's figure out how the inner workings of these multiplexer and what what are the inner workings of this multiplexer remember it's a combinational logic circuit and so far all we've known all we've done is say okay we've got here's a four to one mux four to one we've got three inputs i3 i2 i1 and i0 and we've got a single output and in this case we're going to have to have two select bits s1 and s0 so there's my, my 4 to 1 mux, but what about the stuff that's inside the multiplexer? What, what does that look like? All right, so we could, we could uh, for this multiplexer, we could build up the truth table, looking at all of the inputs, i2, i1, i3, i2, i1, i0, and we have s1 and s0, and then we have our output, and we build up the truth table, you know, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, what value would you have for output? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, what value would we have for the output? And this is going to be, this is possible to do, but it's going to take a long time. Maybe not hard, but this would take a long time. So instead of doing that, let's uh, just think about what this circuit's doing for a sec. How does, how does the, the what, what's going on in, inside the multiplexer? Let's think about what's going on inside the multiplexer. Or what, what the multiplexer is trying to do in general. Now, if S1 and S0 are 1, 1, then the only value that we care about is I3. I2, I1, and I0 are not going to be selected. They're not connected to the output, so who cares what they are. If S1, S0 is 1, 0, we only care about I2. If S1, S0 is 0, 1, we only care about I1. And if S0, S1, S0 is 0, 0, we only care about I0. So if we put this into, so that, that we're, we're going to create a, a sum of products expression. So if we consider the sum of products part for S1, S0 when they're equal to 1, 1, we'll have S1, S0. And if we consider S1, S0 when we only have when we when the values are 1, 0, that is S1, not S0. And if we think about what for, for creating a sum of products expression when S1, S0 are 0, 1, we're gonna have not S1, S0. And when S1, S0, 0, 0, 0 we have to have S1, not S1, not S0. Now when we have S1, S0, the only value that we care about is I3. So our 
some product's expression is going to have the i3 in this in this particular product term. And when s1, s0, it's s1, not s0, we only care about i2. And when it's not s1, s0, we only care about i1. And when it's not s1, not s0, we only care about i0. Now, it may not still not be quite apparent how I came up with this expression. So this is actually, this is the expression for my output. Now it's going to be equal to that. So where, I mean, we, we have the expression considering um, each one of the individual combinations of S1, S0. But now let's think, of, let's, let's look at an example. So, and, and, and see how, how this, how we came up with this, how the sum of products expression works here. So let's say S1, S0 was equal to 0, 0. Okay, so actually, now let's do 1, 1. Okay, so S1, S0 is equal to 1, 1. That means that this term here is going to be 0, this term here is going to be 0, and this term here is going to be 0. Right? Because um, S1 not S0 would be 1, 0. Not S1, S0 would be 0, 1, 0 and 1, which gives you 0. And not S1, not S0 would be 0 and 0, which gives you 0. So those three parts of the expression are 0. What's going to determine what our output value is is going to be i3 because s1 s0 s1 ended with s0 is going to be 1 1 ended with 1 is 1 if i3 is equal to 0 then out is equal to 0 if i3 is equal to 1 out is equal to 1 so I2, I1, and I0 have no bearing on what the value of the output is if S1 and S0 are 1 and 1. Now we can, we can expand this to an 8 to 1 multiplexer. We have an 8 to 1 multiplexer. I won't draw, all, I won't label all the inputs. I'll draw them all in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to have three select bits and one output. So we would have I7 down to I0. And we have S2, S1, and S0, and there's our out. So using that same principle as we did with a 4 to 1 multiplexer, out's going to be equal to S2, S1, S0 would select I7, or with S2, S1, S0, not S0, selects I6, or with etc. All the way down to, to um, we, did, we would have eight expressions in this, in this uh, sum of products term. And I'll let you figure out what the rest of the, the other six expressions are. So in today's video, we've looked at what a multiplexer is, looked at some examples of where, of where a multiplexer is used, and even looked at what the inner workings of a multiplexer is in terms of the digital logic that's going to make up the stuff inside the black box of a multiplexer. And hopefully you've learned a little bit today, and I will see you in the next video.